there you have it 16 foot 16k short track dump trailer i picked it up from kelly and sons it is a heavier duty trailer than the 14 foot that we had i actually did have a 16 foot 14k dump trailer on order but it was delayed and delayed due to the current economic situation everybody's got delays right now and it's hard to say when that when that other one that I ordered will be in. But this one came up on, available at, at Kelly and Sons, actually. Same place where I got the first one, and I grabbed it. I figured I might as well hurry up and grab it before it's too late, and I'm glad I got it. It was a little bit more money, but at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal. So if you are looking for a dump trailer, check out Kelly and Sons. There's the number. They are... They're great. They're great over there. And they actually did a walk around in the truck. So instead of me trying to explain everything with this trailer, let's let Kelly and Sons explain it. Uh, he did a full tour on camera with me. So here is that clip. Roll it. All right, guys. Welcome back to DS Trucks. Check it out. We've got our 2019 F-250 and a brand new dump trailer. We got a 16-foot, 16K this time. And I'm here with Steve. He's going to talk about this trailer and let us know everything we need to know. How's it going? So this is a uh, 2020 Sure Track 16 foot, 16,000 gross. So right off the bat, they're going to give you a 12K jack with a drop leg on it. Um, you have a telescopic ram, so it's a, definitely by far the best lift mechanism out of anything on them. You'll have your spare tire, a tarp kit, wood board extensions, and then drop leg stab jacks in the rear end on this trailer that comes standard from Kelly and Sons. Um, with this telescopic ram, it is a power up, gravity fed coming down. So you're never gonna be stuck on the landfill or anywhere with your, your dump being actually stuck up in the air because it is gravity fed coming down. With that being said, they give you a chain on the front. So if you're ever loading up equipment out of the back with that being just gravity fed coming down, they have you put that chain in there so this dump's not going to tip up, tip up on you. Um, something fantastic that SureTrack does, they run Zerk fittings literally everywhere on this trailer. Anything that has a moving part, they put Zerks onto it. Keeping your stuff greased, greased up is just going to add to the longevity of the trailer. So they give you two Zerks right on your front for on your 12K jack. There's going to be four up on the front end of your hoist, one on each side of the your pins that go through there and then one on each on the bottom um, then simple stupid is something else that they they do that sets them apart they actually put zerk fit fittings on these hinges in the back side keeps these doors lubed up it's definitely something that you want to keep uh keep greased up everything in here your battery your hydraulics you got a 110 charger in here uh and then the other spots just to show you for your Zerk fittings on this trailer after this front end is right on your tarp kit. You're going to have Zerks on each side of your tarp kit. You'll have Zerks on the center of your wheels for your Easy Lube hubs here. You'll also have Zerks on your slipper spring suspension. That's right on the center bolt of your suspension. Two Zerks on each side on your pivot points. And then you're going to have four on each door in the rear end. Getting back here, they give you those stab jacks that we talked about. Whenever loading up equipment, it is always a good idea to drop those stab jacks down because it keeps the pressure off of the tongue of the trailer and then of the rear end of the truck so you're not putting so much pressure on your hitch. In the back here, um, you have your normal barn door gates here or you have it also as your spreader gate. With the barn doors, whenever you're dumping, always, always, always chain your doors back. The first time you don't do that, it's about a six, $700 replacement for rear doors. So always, always, always chain these suckers back. Uh, but also with these, as I said, it's a dual purpose door in the back. So you have your regular barn doors, or if you're ever putting down stone in the driveway and you're not wanting to use your machine quite as much you're going to pull this pin out of here set it back into the second slot and now you got a spreader gate option so it's just like how a dump truck works these chains on the side will allow you to adjust it in the front here 
more chain you put in, less material you're gonna have to come out of there. More or less chain you put in, more material because you can actually spread it out properly like that. Um, then underneath here you have your ramps that stow underneath so you're not breaking your back every time you gotta lift these out when you're loading up equipment. What you're gonna do is turn that pin that way facing you and it slides right on out. Now your ramps can slide out, clip into your back door and you can run up your uh, equipment. So with the Easy Lube hubs, how often do you actually take that cover off and put grease into the bearing? We always recommend doing um, axle services every 12 months or 12,000 miles. I do these every day in the shop. That's pulling apart your, taking the tire off the hub, pulling the whole hub apart, cleaning all that old grease out of there, repacking bearings, putting in new seals. And while I have everything apart, I'm checking to make sure that the brakes are wearing properly, that your brakes are working properly, and kind of just doing a 10 point inspection on the whole trailer when we do them here. But like I say, for doing easy lube hubs, we always recommend doing every 12 months or 12,000 miles. Um, the best way, if you're ever wanting to grease these suckers up, you can jack up the trailer and spin this wheel while you're pumping grease into it. It's hitting each roller in that bearing. Um, so, so when you do that, do you do it until it shoots out? Yep, so what the, the easy... It clean itself out a little? Correct. So the easy lube hubs are better than what the old bearing buddies were of the old time, where the bearing buddies would pump grease from your outside in, and nine times out of 10, if you kept on pumping, you'd blow the seals out in the rear end. With the easy lube hubs, it's a hollowed out spindle. So it actually pumps grease through your spindle and pushes it from the inside out. So that's kind of a way to be able to clean out some of that older grease. Um, but like I say, every 12 months, you should do the full service just so then you're getting your new seals in. Cause that is the weakest part in the whole thing. So you always want to be uh, putting in new seals when you do that. All right, so going to a 16 foot 16k the payload is higher but it's not that much higher correct so is there more steel somewhere or is there well more you're frame? What's... you're getting two more foot of trailer so you have that much more steel plus this thing is heavier duty it's built heavier than that 14 foot 14k so the 14 foot 14k's gbw is that 14,000 gross but you can have uh, 10,400 into it I believe on the 16 foot 16K, it's just under 11,000. It's 10,008 or 10,900, somewhere around there. Um, but just in simple stupid as how heavy duty these rims and the tires are on these, I believe these are, a, uh, uh, let's see, a 16 ply tire compared to the eight ply or 10 ply that would be on a eight lug 14,000 gross. There's a way heavier duty tire on this as well. Okay. And that's gonna be something that instead of being able to just plug this tire, you're gonna have to patch it from the inside. It correct, correct, that. correct. Yep. Um, so yeah, I noticed that the inside of the box, it looks a little bit different. Yep, um, so you're gonna actually have a way bigger reservoir in this because you actually have a higher stroke for dumping wise. So there's definitely more fluid in there. And then there's a new um, 110 charger that they put onto these compared like to- a little bit bigger battery. Correct, yep, yep. It's gonna be that 12 volt marine grade battery into it, which when it's hooked up to the truck, it gives a misconception that a lot of people think that that's charging off of the truck. What it's doing is maintaining that battery life. So if you have a job that's three hours away and your battery's dead, you're gonna get there and your battery is still dead it doesn't charge it, it maintains that life. So I have guys who leave them hooked up to the trucks and they run them seven days a week and they may not charge a battery for upwards of a year. It's guys who run them once in a while, they're gonna have to charge up that battery more often. Where on the front end here, you have your 110 charging unit. So at the end of the day, end of the week, you can just plug in an extension cord and that's sending juice back into your battery. So you 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 got a Ford. Yep. Uh, you got a couple of newer Fords here. A lot of guys have been saying that they have a hard time with the outlet here on the Ford truck, not charging until, I guess if you put a voltmeter on it, you're not gonna get 12 volts unless you plug something into it. Some guys are saying they're not charging. Maybe they're just not charging fast enough or what? 
more than likely what that's doing is that their battery is already so low on the trailer itself that they're not starting with 100% of a battery life on this thing. So if you run the heck out of it, just sitting there and your battery's already down to, you know, 25 or 50 percent and you then think that you're going to keep on being able to run it like crazy well your battery's already at half life so if you're starting off the week with 100 percent charge on that battery i mean we like you just said we all have fords and we haven't had any issues with that no, kind I of stuff had any issues myself. yep and it, it, what it is is that 12 volt hot wire that runs back that's what feeds everything that you so all right well i think we pretty much hit it all i mean cool cool Thank you, I appreciate it. No problem. Congratulations on the new trailer, sir. Yeah, well, given the circumstances, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right, well, thanks a lot, Steve. We're gonna see you guys at the next scene. All right, and we are back home. Got the truck and trailer in the driveway. And I have to say, very nice trailer. I've already had the first dump with the trailer, and it was nice, guys. It was really, really nice nice so yeah i mean here it is in the driveway um now it doesn't fit really in the backyard anymore so trying to back up and make that turn around the oh it's locked gotta try to do this with one hand so making that turn around this chimney is quite difficult and it doesn't it doesn't want to make that turn it doesn't want to make that turn so what i've been doing is i've been parking it here and i've got the f-250 over here on the grass and i can just drive the f-250 off the grass but every time i got a cut and pulled out the utility trailer with the mowers on it i've got to hook up to the dumb trailer and move it out the way now i do have a new parking spot I do have a new parking spot. It is a truck station. They've got a scale. They've got a full shop that you can use with mechanics and everything. Tires, commercial tires, so I can get the F450 tire service there. They've got a huge truck wash. It's a brand new facility, and it's where people are parking semi trucks. So it's a bunch of owner operators there. And actually, when I went in there, they were like, we've got no open spaces. But because my trailer is not a semi truck it's shorter it's going to be parked next to a bunch of bobtails which is basically a tractor truck like a semi truck without its trailer it's just a bobtail so i'm going to be parking next to a bobtail and it's uh it's got 24 7 security and it's cool so whenever i'm doing videos and stuff about towing and whatever i can actually go across the scale and weigh the trailers so that way i know how much the trailers weigh so that's all cool but uh anyway uh i think that's pretty much it you know i did tow the trailer with the f-250 on the way home and it did good but getting used to a diesel uh, i was kind of missing the power i was kind of missing the power it did get the job done i mean it's a five thousand pound trailer compared to before it was a 4,000 pound trailer, but you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference, but the diesel truck just whips that trailer around no factor. Like super performance with the diesel truck. The gas truck, like I say, gets it done. A little bit difficult to pass, a little bit difficult to pass under other traffic, but gets the job done. But anyway, this is DS Trucks. My name is Sean. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Over and out.